I know for a fact that your life will never be the same again. That is so. Today or tonight, because it's at night where I am, will be a special night and I'll tell you why. Because what I'm going to teach about is what unlocked me. Yes, there was a time and there was a day where I was unlocked in the Holy Spirit. I was preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a young age, I started preaching. You guys know that. I was preaching city after city, declaring the wonderful works of God. But I want you to understand that there were dimensions that I never knew existed. Amen. And some of them I did not know that men could fathom them. Amen. I longed and desired what I knew. But there was a time and a day where I was unlocked. And from that day onward, from that day going forward, my life was never the same again. Amen. And for a very long time, I've not really desired to teach about it. But I just feel we are in a time where God is raising genuine Christians. And the reason why I'm using the word genuine Christians is because people are used to false prophets, Amen. false teachers, false apostles, Amen. false evangelists, and false pastors. Mm -hmm. But people don't talk about false Christians. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, we've had false Christians in the church. Yeah. They talk about God. They have a form of godliness, but deny his power there. But the season we are in, God is not just raising genuine men and women of God, but also genuine Christians. Who so, so, so. will become the testimony of his glory. So. And hence I believe he has released me to come and teach you what I'm teaching you in this season. That is so. I'm telling you, it's fire for fire. That is so. I wish you were here and were excited because I, I thought I was coming to talk to people who are seriously ready for the move of God in their lives. People who are saying, God, you are not just going to do something for me in this season, but you are also going to do something through me. One has to move from God doing it for you into God doing it through you. And of course, I want you to get your Bible quickly. In the Holy Ghost, get your Bible. If you don't have your Bible with you, make sure you have your Bible. And get your notebook. We are going to, to, be, to be deep tonight. Get your notebook. And if you are watching me, there we go, on YouTube. I want you to copy the link and share it. Because I do know that you can share using your social media platforms. Amen. 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 You can literally copy the link and put it on your Facebook. And you tell your friends that we are live. Amen. 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 And I know that Jehovah will touch them. That is so. And their lives will never be the same again. That is so. So wherever you are, go ahead and copy the link quickly. Let's reach as many people as we can. Amen. Amen. I have on YouTube, Lydia. Oh, Lydia says, Dad, Zoom is giving trouble, so I'm here. Okay, <laughs> amen, as long as you are here. I have, you were with us earlier, and now you are back with us again. Thank you for the sacrifice, Apostle. That's uh, Caleb Mvuseleno. God bless you, Caleb. Amen. amen. 
we have Fabian who's watching for the first time. Amen. Life of Ness is here. Oh, yes. Amen. Brother Gift is also here. Oh, yes. It won't be Brother Gift anymore, it will be Evangelist Gift. Oh, yes. Amen. I'm seeing a lot of fire emojis. Em uh, YouTube is saying, let's go, Apostle. Of course, it's going to be another revelatory experience in the Holy Ghost. That is so. Lift up your Bible up high. If you don't have your Bible, lift up your hand quickly. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I believe. I believe. It contains the Word of God. It contains the Word of God. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I will do what it says I will do. I will do what it says I will do. Today I will be taught the word of God. Today I will be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My heart is receptive. Ready to receive the incorruptible word of God. Ready to receive the incorruptible word of God. And my life, and my life shall never, shall never, ever, ever be the same again. Be the same again. Somebody say glory. Glory. Earlier on, we had a service today, and we were talking about violation of spiritual protocols. Amen. Amen. To say violation of spiritual protocols opens up a door for limitations. Amen. Amen. And the title of the day was No More Delay. If you skipped that service, go ahead. After this service, just go and watch it. It's still there on YouTube. Amen. It will bless you in a mighty way. Amen. Just as I was talking today at church, I want to also talk here. Amen. Amen. The title and the subject of today is Custodians of Power, Amen. Glory and Dimensions. Yes, I will say that again in the Holy Ghost. Custodians of Power, glory and dimensions mm -hmm. we all know what the word custodian means it's more than just being a guardian mm -hmm. to be a custodian is to be a watcher mm -hmm. is to be a keeper mm -hmm. it goes beyond just being a guardian but is to be a watcher and is to be a keeper we are the custodians of power. Amen. Amen. What that means is, as long as you are listening to me and you are a child of God, you are born again. You are an agent of change. Amen. What is an agent? An agent is somebody who has been legally empowered or legally authorized to act on behalf of somebody. Amen. Once you become an agent of change, you have been legalized by heaven, empowered by heaven to move on their behalf. Amen. Amen. So the change that heaven was supposed to cause in the lives of men, God uses you as a point of contact. Amen. So through you, he does it. Yes, sir. Amen. Say with me, custodians of glory. Custodians of Say custodians of power. Custodians of power. Say custodians of dimensions. Custodians of dimensions. Now, since everybody knows what custodian is, what agent is, let's talk about for a minute power. Power is the uh, is is actually an ability to cause change. Amen. That's what power is. Amen. We then have glory not just cardboard but we have glory as god's presence made manifest Amen. Amen. you know a lot of christians don't know god's glory they talk about it they can't tell the difference between god's presence and god's glory i've taught on glory so many times every year we have nights of glory so we always talk about glory. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We then have dimensions. Now, if you are here and you don't know what spiritual dimensions are, it's okay. 
I will quickly explain that for you now. For you, I will do it. Whenever we are talking about spiritual dimensions, we are talking about a realm of possibilities or a realm where possibilities are kept. Spiritual dimensions or a spiritual dimension is a realm where graces are kept. A realm where spiritual realities are kept. So every time you access a dimension, you are accessing more than just the name dimension. You are accessing realities. You are accessing mentals, graces that you can't access until you are in that dimension. There are certain things you can never fathom no matter how loud you are in your prayers, no matter how zealous you are, no matter how hungry you are, no matter the hungry, no matter. You see, there are people who are ambitious when it comes to the things of God. They don't love God. They're just ambitious. They want to see angels. They don't know why they want to see angels. <laughs> they want to see angels so that at least their curiosity can be satisfied. The devil is a lie. Hence, they will never you know, move that way because such things are kept in dimensions. Yes, so you need to be intentional. Somebody say intentional. intentional. Say intentional. intentional. One more time, say intentional. intentional. Just like most of you, whenever you sleep, you dream. And nobody has to tell you you dreamt. You know you dreamt because you are in a dream. So when you enter a dimension, you won't enter a dimension and not know you entered a dimension. Mm -hmm. Just as when one dreams, they know they dreamed. Yes, so you cannot enter a dimension and not know that you entered a dimension. Amen. I don't know if I'm making sense yes, to you. Yes, exactly. You can be caught up into it where you were not planning to enter it. But the spirit took you in. But once you are in, you will know I was caught up. Amen. That's why Paul will say, I know of a man who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven. So he knows he was caught up, but here's what he doesn't know. He says, whether in the flesh or in the body, I cannot tell. He heard things and saw things that it was not lawful for him to utter. But he knows he was caught up. The Bible says, and Philip was caught up. So you cannot be caught up and not know you are caught up. Here I'm actually debunking something because there are people who say, I don't know if I'm in the spirit. No, no, no. Once you are caught up, you will know. You and God, you will know. Yes, sir. Just as when one slept and they dreamt, they will know they dreamt. Yes. I don't know if you are ready. Yes, so today I want to teach you on a secret. Secret that will cause you to be an active custodian Amen. of the three things we spoke about. Power, glory, and dimensions. Yes, sir. And of course, for the glory of God. Amen. I don't know if you people understand the moment we are in right now. Like I said, that this is a moment or the teaching that unlocked my life. Or yes, a sir. mystery that unlocked yes, my life. Yeah. Let me put it in a way that some people understand because a lot of people think, but Apostle, you are always deep in your teaching. So we are expectant in a form of, in a, in a sense of we are expectant, uh, uh, we know you will be deep. No. We know we'll grow spiritually. No. We know what you're about to say is powerful. No. This is not that time. Are we together? Not all time in the spirit is the same. Not all time in the spirit is the same. There is what we call chronos time. And there is what we call kairos moment. Chronos time is preparation time. But whenever we talk about Kairos moment, we are talking about an hour of harvest. Mm. An hour of manifestation. Come on, church. Yes, sir. I'll give an example. In the book of John chapter 5, and you read from verses 4, the Bible says, In a certain season, an angel of the Lord came down yes, sir. to the pool. Remember the pool of Bethesda? Yeah. And troubled the water. Whoever went in first after the water was troubled was healed from, from whatsoever sickness, Amen. from whatsoever disease, from whatsoever problem, from whatsoever issue. Whoever went in first was healed. Now, watch this. Here's what I want you to understand, and here's what I want you to hear. The pool was always there. 
You are missing me already. I don't know if you Zoom you are getting it. It's just the people in here who are missing it already. You see, the pool was always there. But the stirring up will happen in a season. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. So you can't just enter a pool because the stirring up is happening in the pool. You will come out the same. Yes, sir. But you wait for the angel of the Lord to trouble the water. Amen. And once there is a stirring up when you enter, you don't come out the same. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are services that are not just services. Amen. Amen. The water has been troubled. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You yes, enter that dimension, you, 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 that service, you enter the pool in that service, your eyes are open. Yes, sir. You yes, sir. enter, when you look, your problems are cancelled. Yes, yes, when I talk about problems, you, have a, you had an issue in your body. Amen. You had a pain at your back. Amen. You had a gum problem. Amen. You had an ear problem. Amen. You had a leg problem. Amen. And before you know it, the service is not yet finished. You begin to check for that problem. Nobody prayed for you. It's gone. You receive a notification on your phone and it says that job application you have received the job. You just receive something on your phone that that bursary that you applied for has been approved. Okay, let me say it in a way. <laughs> it takes God nothing to change your life. That, that was too big. It takes God nothing to cancel your debt. But for it to happen, it needs Kairos. Amen. Yes, sir. I've never in, in a long time, I think I've done this once, and this is the second time, where I had a service on Sunday. Yes, sir. And after Sunday, I come and I preach at night. Yes, sir. That should tell you a lot. The service could have been tomorrow. Yes, could have, we could have waited on, until Wednesday. Amen. But why are we here? Amen. Kairos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah. There are times where angels begin to move. Yes, sir. Aya. Aya. And when they begin to move, the entities of Zion begins to match themselves with us. Amen. I don't know if you are hearing. <laughs> Ah, the Hallelujah. Pastor Brian, there are times where the entities of glory come to the realm of men. Where they themselves don't want to leave the realm of men. Because as we have seized the moment, we have created an atmosphere they cannot escape. Yes, sir. I don't know if they understand it. You see, for you to understand what I'm saying, because I see some people are getting it, and some people are very slow. For you to understand this, you need to understand. For you to understand where the mystery of being custodians of power, glory, and dimensions is coming from, right? You need to understand who you are, where you come from, and how you came to be. Once you understand that man is a product, as a matter of fact, a product of deity, mm -hmm. you'll understand what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man came from a womb of a deity. Yes, sir. And for men to thrive, men must operate from that womb. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But there are things you need to do to access that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not here. Listen, this is too much. Uh, you should put fire emojis there. You are a product of deity. You came from a womb yes, of deity. When God spoke to himself and said, let us make men. Yes, Isaiah said, and the Lord said to my Lord, yes, sit on my right hand. Oh, yeah. Until I make your enemies your footstool. Oh, yeah. In Genesis, and God said, Let us. Aya. 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 Where immortality wanted to dwell inside mortality. Not just move amongst mortality or those that are of the flesh. No, but live. Pastor Brian, there are dimensions. Yes, sir. The book of first, no, 
It should be first, first John, right? It should be. No, third John. Let's let's check first John. Let's check first John. Yeah, first John, chapter one, verse one. That is the main scripture of the day. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. Some of you, you begin to hear and hear, and then all of a sudden you hear sounds in the spirit. That is so. That is so. That is so. It will be as if somebody is busy saying things like, no, 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 no. Hear now. Listen to what John is saying. And this is where our message is taking uh, off. I'm not in a hurry. So I ask you not to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. What is John saying? Read for us. The book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. That's correct. That which was from the beginning. That which was from the beginning. Is it on the screen as well? Okay, continue. Which we have heard. Uh -huh. Which we have seen with our eyes. Uh -huh. Which we have looked upon. Uh -huh. And our hands have handled. Uh -huh. Of the word of life. Now watch this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sister. He says, that which was from the beginning. He is not talking about the time they started walking with Jesus. Oh, yeah. I want you guys to hear me. He has moved beyond the kitten of time. Oh, yes. He is talking about that which was from the beginning. Amen. Watch this now. Which we have had. Somebody, you are hearing something right now. That is so. That is so. Which we have seen. Oh, yes. With our eyes. Oh, yes. hey. Which we have looked upon. <laughs> and our hands have handled. Of the word of life. Listen to verse 2, because people know it from there. But verse 2 will mess you up. Verse 3 will finish you. <laughs> For the life was manifested, yes, and we have seen it, oh, yes, and bear witness, mm. and show unto you that eternal life, yes, which was with the Father, yes, and was manifested unto us. Yes, verse 3 will mess you up. Everybody pay attention to verse 3. That which we have seen had declared we unto you. Ah, yeah. That which we have seen and had declared we unto you. But listen to what he's saying now. My, my, my spirit feels like coming out of my body. That ye also may have fellowship with us. You missed it already. That's where the revelation is. No, no, that's where the revelation is. I told you, verse 3 is supposed to finish you. Yes, sir. Hey, let me read it again. Perhaps you, you missed it. That which we have seen and heard, declared we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship. So John is saying, pay attention everybody, because I know some of you, you depend on interpretation, even though the scripture on its own is like that. It's, yes, it, the revelation is there. Yes, sir. He's talking about that which he himself has seen. Head handled with others, of course, that which was from the beginning. Mm. He says, We declared it unto you, yes, sir. so that you also may have a fellowship. Yes, sir. Meaning, this is an invitation hey, for you to participate. Yes, sir. Oh, you missed it yes, already. Sir. Ah. Yes, sir. So, John is not selfish, he's inviting you to participate so, so. in that which he had seen. Head, handle, rubbed against. He says there is a certain level of glory. That we declared it unto you so that ye also may have fellowship. Meaning we are invited. This is John who wrote Revelation. John who wrote the book of John. This man was a custodian of glory. Dimensions and power. Let's talk a little bit about John. Kula Mahande. John was a man who never wanted to write the book of John. Yes, sir. He was pushed by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Hence the book of John was written after the day of the Pentecost. Yes, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes, and when he wrote, he said, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Who told him? Meaning the man fathomed a realm called the realm of eternity. Yes, sir. He was in a dimension of God. Yes, sir. And he was able to see God in oh, yeah. the beginning. Oh, yeah. And he was oh, yeah. able to see who God was with in the beginning. 
and he was able to see who God was in the beginning. Hence, he says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. He speaks about the pre-existence of the word, the core existence of the word. He even personified the word, and he said, all things were made by him. Yes, sir. That's John, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you a mystery. When it comes to dimensions, uh, I, I taught this about this on the school, so I'll just pass by. There are laws that governs and guards dimensions. And of course, you know that once you violate that law, that dimension will vomit you. We all know that the first thing that greets you when you enter a dimension is a law that governs that dimension. But hear this, nobody gets into a dimension unless they're invited. Some of you, the reason why you can't fathom dimensions is because you have no one to invite you. Because the doors of dimensions are not like our natural doors. They don't have handlers outside. But the handlers are inside. So somebody who's already inside has to invite you. And Jesus said something similar when he said, knock, it shall be opened. Yes, he didn't sir. say, knock, yes, and you sir. shall open. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are not the one opening. Yes, sir. Somebody is already yes, inside, yes, opening for you where you are yes, knocking. Sir. Yes, sir. So even when it comes to dimensions, the handlers are not outside. Yes, sir. They are only inside. Yeah. You can be in a dimension and be invited in another dimension. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And of course, I was teaching my mentees about the seventh dimensions, mm -hmm. multi-dimensions. And we went deeper, we went deeper, which I won't talk about today, but watch this now. When you read the Bible in the book of Revelation, and you read verses 10 of chapter 1, he says, I was in the spirit in the day of the Lord. Amen. That's John himself. Yes, sir. He says, when I heard the voice that spoke behind me, it sounded like a trumpet. And when you read verse 9, he says, I was in the island of Patmos. Yes, sir. Then when you get to verse 10, he says, I was in the spirit in the day of yes, the Lord. Yes, sir. So John is telling us that he was physically in a place called Patmos. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But on that very day, he was taken in the spirit, to yes, the sir. spirit. Yes, sir. And while he was in the spirit, it was when he entered the spirit, he heard a voice behind him. Mm -hmm. And the voice he heard sounded like a trumpet. Hey. Now, the voice said, write these letters to the seven churches. Yes, sir. So, John is about to begin the book of, book of Revelation. Yeah. And we know that the book of Revelation begins with the letters to the seven churches. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But how is he writing the seven letters? He is in the spirit. Yes, sir. But physically, he was in the island of Patmos. Yes, sir. But for him to hear and write, he has to be in a dimension. Yes, sir. So, while he is in a dimension, he writes, he writes, he writes, he writes. And he writes the last letter. But where is John? In the spirit. Yes, Physically, where is he? In the island of Patmos. Amen. Now, when he finished, watch this now. When he finished with the letters, something happens. And the Bible says in chapter 4 now of Revelation, because from chapter 1 down to chapter 3, the man is writing the letters to the churches. Yes, yes, and when he gets to chapter 4, now you read verse 1. And he says, uh, and the same voice that I had on the first day, and you and I, we know, he's talking about Revelation 1.10, yes, sir. when he was in the island of Patmos. Yes, and he even says, the one that sounded like a trumpet spoke to me again. Mm. Meaning from that period, it was about letter, 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 and that was it. Mm. Then in chapter 4, the voice speaks to him. Mm. But the voice says, John, look up. Mm. And when he looked up, he saw the heavens. And the Bible says, and a gate opened. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. John is already in the spirit. Come on, church. Come on, church. He's in a dimension. Yes. But inside a dimension, another door opens. Yes, sir. And the Bible says, and I heard the same voice saying to me, come up hither. Yes, sir. He did not see a door open and he went up. He was invited. Yes. Ah, yeah. yes. In the spirit, he's going to the spirit. And as he goes up, he's no longer writing in the shallow now. Amen. Now he starts speaking about the mark of the beast. Amen. Why? Because the dimension he was in was for the churches. Yes. 
to hear something for the judges. Yes, but the one he was invited to now, ah, yeah, he could see beyond the curtain of time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say with me, spiritual dimensions. Spiritual dimensions. Say glory. Glory. Say power. Power. But there is a shortcut to power. To glory, to dimensions. <laughs> That's where I'm going. Ah, uh, come on, church. Uh, I don't know on, on Zoom here. On Zoom here. Are you guys here today? Or should we close the service and then maybe have it another time? No, We are, we are. I see uh, 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 Jenny there. I see uh, Joy there. I see Abby there. Ju uh, July there saying we are having it today. I don't know if uh, we should have it today or what. Yes, sir. Or maybe on Wednesday it will be a perfect time. You guys will be ready. To become a custodian of glory, mm -hmm. you must know what an ordinary believer doesn't know. Yes, sir. You can know what they know and function in a different way. Are we together? Yes, sir. What you know will separate you. To become a custodian, mm. more than anything, and this is a mystery. Mm. When John said, I, we are inviting you so that you can participate in this fellowship. Mm. Amen. He's calling us, spirit calleth to spirit, deep calleth unto the deep. Amen. He's inviting us. Amen. But I want you to understand that we have a shortcut. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Say, what is the shortcut, Apostle? What is the shortcut? Ah, the way you are asking, I'm closing this service. I think I will rest nicely and I will wake up nicely. Then I will talk to you when you are ready. Are ready? Me, I'm not talking to people who, who don't know me. I'm talking to people who have, who have been here, yes, who are sir. always here. Yes, sir. I want to see what is uh, this platform saying. Um, what is this again? YouTube. I want to see people on YouTube. If I'm not seeing fire emojis on YouTube, it means I'm on my own. <laughs> oh my goodness. Kila baronda la acre. Ila croseveida and nili mam vehe cas. so. Somebody, I don't know. This should be a good comment, though. My, my head always spins when I listen to you. It's as if I don't know my Bible. <laughs> I think it's a good comment, right? Okay, okay. I think it's a good comment. But hey, the fact that their head is spinning, that's kind of <laughs> crazy a little bit. Okay, now watch this. The shortcut, and I'll break this one down, is being filled and being baptized. Write it down. Remember, John said, He that cometh shall baptize you, baptize you, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Mm -hmm. So there is what we call baptism of the Holy Ghost. John said it. Jesus did not deny it. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So number one, you need to be filled. Mm -hmm. Then number two, you need to be baptized. Mm -hmm. let, let me quickly explain that. Because I know one will say, but what's the difference? And I thank God, one of my mentees in the mentorship uh, class asked a similar question and I answered it. Amen. Watch this. One will say, but what is the difference, Apostle? So I'm telling you a shortcut now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe you thought I would say, go and go to the river and dip yourself seven times. Mm -hmm. No. You, I'm not Elisha and you're not Naman. Amen. You don't have Libros. Watch this. I'm telling you a mystery. Amen. The shortcut to dimensions, glory. You want to move in power, hear me, is to be filled and is to be baptized. John told us that Jesus' baptism will be different from his. His is of water. But of Jesus will be of the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. He then went further and said, with fire. Now, one is asking about the apostle what is the difference between being filled and being baptized? Mm. 
Before I answer you, I want you to hear me and hear me well in the Holy Ghost. Most people are limited because they are not baptized, but they are filled. Because once you are baptized, you won't have a choice but to speak in tongues. Um, this is part of the shortcut. So this message will lead us into speaking in tongues. <laughs> it will make sense. Now, what is the difference? Let me quickly explain this uh, to you in this way. If you look at uh, the bottle that I have here, let me quickly drink uh, a little bit. If you look at... Um, let me drink again. If you look at the bottle that I have here, it's a 500 millimeter bottle. Amen. It then tells us that this bottle can only contain 500 millimeter, either water, whatever that is, that you decide to uh, put inside here. It's actually the size of this bottle. Amen. Pay attention, everybody. Don't miss me here. The water inside is the content. Mm -hmm. The bottle is the container. Mm -hmm. When I begin to shake this bottle, what moves is what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. But the move is actually determined by the movement of the bottle. Yes, so if the bottle is not moving, the content is not moving. Mm -hmm. For the content to move inside, I need to shake the bottle. Amen. So the bottle is the one that has power over what is on the inside. Amen. Now, watch this. So the water is 500 what? Millimeters. Mm. And then right there when I shake it, the contents inside starts moving. Mm. But if I stop shaking, nothing happens. Yes, sir. That's being filled. Mm -hmm. When one is filled, is the Holy Spirit in you. And by the reason of you being the container, him being the content, yes, sir. you can decide when to pray. Mm. Mm. You can decide when to fast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can decide when to worship. Mm. Why? Because you are the one now who decides just as I'm shaking this bottle. Mm. So what is inside here does not control the bottle. Yes, sir. That is being filled. Mm -hmm. Why? Because this water, this bottle actually is filled with water. Yes, sir. But the bottle has control over the water. Yes, sir. I, hope, I hope you guys understand. Yes, sir. But if I take the same bottle and I throw it inside water, mm. inside a river, inside Jordan River, mm. Mm. Yes, now the waves of the water will begin to move the bottle. Oh, yeah. Yes. And when the bottle moves, even that which is inside the bottle moves. But it is not the bottle that is dictating the move. It is the water that is outside. Yes, sir. Though there is water inside, I don't know if you yeah, are getting it. Yeah. So when baptism hits you, mm. it is no longer you controlling yourself. Yes, sir. You are now being controlled by the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Yes, ah, yes, let sir. me leave you alone. I think you will hear me when Jesus comes. When rapture takes place, you will be like, that was powerful. Watch this now. Watch this now. A lot of people are filled, but not so many people are baptized. Yes, sir. You can't be baptized and you don't speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Yes, sir. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Talk to me, Apostle. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Talk to me, Apostle. You can't be baptized and not speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You can be filled and not speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. But you can't be baptized and not speak in tongues. Can I go deeper? I seriously want to go deeper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Can I go deeper? I just feel like I'm on my own. The reason why I'm saying you cannot be baptized and you don't speak in tongues is because the first thing that the Holy Spirit does when he baptizes you or when he gets hold of you mm. in a form of baptism, mm -hmm. he gives you the ability to speak in tongues. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is the first thing that he does. And I will explain it to you. Why speaking in tongues? 
Now, let's break it down and pay attention, everybody. Why do we need to speak in tongues? Yes, sir. Why will he give us tongues? I'm trying to find a way that you guys will understand. You are going to observe that when Jesus made a promise in Acts 1.8, yes, when he said, ye shall receive power, yeah. after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Mm -hmm. Right? The first manifestation of the power was the gift of utterance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which is what? The gift of speaking in tongues. Yes, sir. Uh -uh, yes, you, sir. you missed it now. Oh, yeah. He said you shall receive power, yeah. but when you receive it, ye shall be my witnesses. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the first manifestation of the power was a gift of utterance, mm. which is the gift of speaking in tongues. Yes, sir. <laughs> and there is a reason why. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Talk to me, Apostle. Mm. Let me break it down. Let me give an example. Before Africa, write this one down. I don't know. In fact, listen to it and write it the way you will write it so that you don't forget. I think this will be the best example. Before Africa was colonized, right? Write it down if you are writing. I don't know how you're going to write this one down. The colonialists sat down on a big round table. Yes, I'm say, ah, ah, were you there? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a prophet. So they sat on a very big table. Amen. And as they sat, they were saying to one another, how can we colonize Africa and take over their minerals? Because Africa is a rich continent. Yes, because they knew that in Africa, already there were people who were thriving. Mm -hmm. And will do whatever it takes to defend their land. Yes, sir. They will rather die than to give their land for free. Yes, sir. They will defend it with everything in them. Mm -hmm. Then as they are planning, because they want to colonize. The word colonize means to take over. Yes, sir. So they want to take over Africa. One of their wise men stood up. And said, in order for us to colonize Africa, the first thing that we need is to change their language. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, it will yes, sink sir. in. Hey. Because once we change their language, we are going to change their perception. Yes, sir. We are going to change their lifestyle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we are going to change their character. Yes, you and I right now, we speak in English. Yes, sir. And that is because South Africa and the southern part of Africa is under what? Under English. It's an English colony. Yes, sir. It's because of English colony. Yes, sir. That's why we dress English. We eat English. We talk English. Yes, Come on now. Yes, Come on now. Yes, Come on now. Yes, Come on now. Yes, uh, I, I don't know. Online, they're hearing me. I think it's my people on the studio. We are hearing Everything we do is English. Hallelujah. So, you are going to observe, write this one down. You are going to observe by the Spirit of the Lord that the reason why, right, the Holy Spirit will manifest himself in a form of a gift of utterance when he baptizes you is because for any kingdom to take over a people, yes, sir. right, or to colonize a people, they have to change their language first. So the purpose of speaking in tongues is that when the kingdom is coming to colonize the church mm. is to change the lifestyle of the church, oh, yeah. the yeah. perception of the yes, church, sir. and the character yes, of the church. Yes, and that happens when your language changes. Yes, language unites people. Yes, sir. Language makes us one. Yes, sir. You cannot belong to a kingdom Without understanding the language of the kingdom. Yes, sir. And there is a reason why in our kingdom, which is the kingdom of God, right? Mm -hmm. We don't speak in a language of men. Yes, sir. Uh -uh. Yes, sir. Let's go to the yes, Bible. Yes, you, you think Apostle is making it up. Hey. Let's go to the Bible. The book of Zephaniah. Mm. Chapter 3. Let's go to the Bible. Zephaniah chapter 3. And you read verse 9. Oh, I just said something here. Some people are in the New Testament. Some are in the Old Testament. Saying, what is happening right now? What did he just say? Not Zachariah. Hey, Zephaniah. <laughs> Let's go. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 9. That's correct. For then will I turn to the people a pure language. 
Uh -huh. That they may all call upon the name of the Lord. Now, another vision says, For then will I give my people a pure language. Yes, sir. Uh, you're not hearing it. You, you, you may be seated, sister. Let me explain because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the anointing now. He says, I will give to my people yes, sir. a pure language. What is a pure language? You can't tell me English is a pure language. Yes, sir. You can't tell me Zulu is a pure language. Yes, because you can curse, right, and yes, swear in any language under the sun. Mm, mm. But show me how to speak profanity yes, in yes, tongues. Yes, show me how to curse in tongues. Mm. Show me how to swear in tongues. Mm. So when God spoke of pure language, yes, sir. he was speaking in tongues. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Remember, these were people who were delivered from Egypt. Let's go back. Maybe you guys, you'll understand. Let's go back. Go to the book of Psalm 95. If you have verse 11, read it for me. Yeah. Psalm 95. If you have verse 11, read it for me. That's correct. Unto whom I swear in my rest uh -huh. that they should not enter into my rest. Ah, uh, what was the rest? If you read three verses, post takes and pretext is very important, right? Mm -hmm. So if you read three verses before that, you realize that the rest is Canaan. Mm -hmm. But what is Canaan? Canaan is a land full of milk and honey. Yes, sir. Houses you did not build. Yeah. Vineyard you did not plant. Yes, let me come down to your level. Oh. Businesses and companies you did not start. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see, so. once you enter God's rest, is now God doing something and things for you. That is so. That's what God's rest is. That is so. so God is speaking about his rest. But now because we are going back, remember, he said he will give them a pure language. Yes, sir. When, now, let's go to Isaiah. Let, let's marry this thing. Go to Isaiah. Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28. I will tell you this. Amen. Verse 11 and 12. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11. For with stammering lips. With stammering lips. Oh, you didn't hear it. Yes, sir. No, no, you are yes, not sir. here. Zoom. Please come here, Zoom. Let me leave these ones alone here. These ones are, are still caught up somewhere. Let me let me focus on you. Read read again. Let, let's zoom in YouTube here what, what the Lord is saying. For with stammering lips. With stammering lips. What what are stammering lips? Let's go. For with stammering lips uh -huh. and another tongue. Another tongue. Another vision says unknown tongue. Mm -hmm. Do you hear that now? Unknown yes, tongue. What is an unknown tongue? Likrom takaya barushka nandele ekreveza. Miriam sokoroshka nanta hivi. That's an unknown tongue, brothers and sisters. Amen. Continue. And another tongue will he speak. Uh huh. To whom he said, Uh huh. This is the rest. This is the rest. But you and I, we know God's rest. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. oh. We just finish it. I think I'll, I'll just take it another way. To whom he said, Uh huh. This is the rest. Uh huh. Wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Uh huh. And this is the refreshing. This is the refreshing. But not everybody is going to understand it. Let's go. Uh huh. Yet they will. Not hear. Yet they will not hear. Yes, Another one says, Yet some will not hear. Yes, sir. And these are churches who come and say people should not speak in tongues. Yes. Yet they will not hear. I, uh, I wish you guys could hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. So when the Holy Ghost comes to baptize you, yes, sir. the first thing that he does, the first manifestations, uh -huh. listen, we'll go to the Bible. Uh -huh. I know what your, some of you, your pastors told you. But we'll compare notes, isn't it? Mm. We'll go to the Bible. Mm. If ever I get to a point and I teach you things that are not in the Bible, it's your time to leave this church. Mm. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. It's very dangerous. I can't teach you my, 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 my reality. Mm. My reality means if I can't speak in tongues, then nobody should speak in tongues. Yes, the devil is a lie. Mm. So that's what pastors are doing. If they can't prophesy, they stand against and they speak against the prophetic. Yes, sir. They are preaching their reality, not the Bible. Mm. Yet the Bible says, in the last days, God shall pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. We are in the dispensation yes, of the sir. prophetic. Yes, so if your pastor now says you, you, no one should prophesy, it's because they themselves can't prophesy. Yeah. And most of you uh, pastors and most of your pastors will despise the prophetic in public. Mm. 
and pray for the prophetic in private. God will never give you something that you despise in public and seek in private. God is not your grandmother. He doesn't come from your village. Are we together? So it is important for you to understand what the scripture says there. God is talking to his people. He's not talking to everybody. So the first thing that the Holy Spirit does is when he takes over a people, he will give them tongues. Yes, sir. Yes. When you read the Bible, please be seated, you realize that in Acts 19, and you read verse 6, but before verse 6, remember Paul asked them, which baptism have you received? Yes, sir. You know what they said? They said, um, we have received the one of John. He said, but what of the Holy Spirit? What about the one of the Holy Spirit? Yes, they said, we have never heard of him. We don't even know that there is such a thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. And the Bible says, and Paul laid his hand on them. The Bible says, and the Holy Ghost came on them. And they begin to speak in tongues. Ah! Yes, ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Yes, sir. But let's look at the first manifestation. Mm. Speaking in tongues. When Jesus promised them the power. The first thing they did, the power manifested itself in a form of a gift of utterance. Yes, sir. I think I need to go deeper here. Go deeper. Go deeper. I, think, I think I need to go deeper here. Go deeper. Should I go deeper or should I end here? Go deeper. No, no, you tell me here, people. Should we end here or should we go deeper? Go deeper. I want to see go deeper there on your comment section. We are, we are together here, so we are not, uh, we are, you know, we are together. Exactly. Let's go. Tsepo is saying go deeper. I have known Kansha saying go deeper. Enid there, uh, one of my mentees saying go deeper. Uh, Christine saying go deeper. We have uh, so many people. Uh, you zoom. Tick. You got it right today. You are in the spirit. Amen. And I pray that whatever God is doing in this place, he must not do it without you. Amen. Let me see. What's that other platform again? YouTube. Let me see YouTube. If they are with us or they are on a, vaca on a vacation, you should be saying go deeper. I have line there, Broadway saying deeper, Non Casimulo saying deeper, uh, Monia saying deeper, Nana saying deeper, Michael Porsche saying go deeper, Firebrand. Ah, yeah, ah, Firebrand now. That's my language saying go yeah. deeper, Apostle. Uh, Miss Davis saying fire. We have evangelist gift. Ah, gift is prophetic. Oh, yeah. Now the name is no longer Brad. Is it? I'm telling you now. Amen. Ah, yeah. Andrew uh, saying, uh, Andrea saying, go deeper. Amen. Lydia saying, go deeper. Amen. Hadassah saying, go deeper. Melissa is saying, go deeper. Amen. Love truth saying, go deeper. Amen. We have a lot of people here who are understanding it. Let's move. Let's go deeper. I love it because you are not hearing me with the ears of the flesh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It means you are hearing me with the ears of the spirit. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. There are four operations. Right? That, that, or there, are, there is four. The reason why I say, okay, let me talk about four operations of tongues. I don't want to say there are four. There could be many. <laughs> yes, I was running away from that. Let's talk about four operations of tongues that I know of in the Bible. Yes, sir. Let's quickly talk about that. So perhaps you'll understand why when the Holy Ghost comes, and what exactly it means to speak in tongues. Because a lot of people don't even know really why. They box everything and they think it's one thing. No. There are those who pray, there are those who speak. There is a huge difference. Okay, let me answer a question that everyone here has been having. Right? Must every Christian speak in tongues? Yes or no? Now, that's what they want to know. Now. My answer to you is no. Come on. Yes, sir. Every Christian should speak in tongues. Oh, you, you didn't hear the difference, right? Uh -huh. Okay, let me do it again. The question they have is, must every Christian, must, 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 yes, every Christian speak in tongues? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. Every Christian should yes, speak sir. in tongues. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the four operations. Let's quickly talk about the operations. Number one, groaning. Groaning. Now, we see groaning 
in the book of Romans 8 26 mm -hmm. with groanings that cannot be uttered remember yes, sir. the Bible says the Holy Ghost prays through us now when somebody groans this is a dimension this is not just a, an ability to speak in tongues. Yes, sir. Don't miss, don't miss the words that are coming out of my mouth. Because mm -hmm. I can hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. When you groan, it is not just prayer. Yes, sir. It is a dimension. Hey. Out of 10,000 believers, two can groan. Mm -hmm. And the rest will experience rapture, will go to glory without even one day groaning. Because to groan is not easy. Yes, sir. Groaning is not what people do in the gym. Mm, 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 ah, stop that thing. Stop, 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 stop it. When the Holy Ghost comes, yes, sir. I'm telling you, yes, sir. when you begin to groan, you yourself might not even know you groaned. But others will know you are groaning. I can show you in the Bible. Mm. Groaning is not mm, mm, mm. Hey, you love drama. People. <laughs> Go in the corner like this and say, mm, mm. what are you doing? Stop those things. Those things are childish. Mm. Mature. Yes, sir. The Bible says in the book of John. Should we go there? You yes, guys sir. have time. Yes, sir. Let me show you. Yes, sir. John chapter 11. This one, we need to read it. Remember Jesus and the, the friend, yes, sir. Brother Lazarus. Do you guys remember Brother Lazarus? Yes, sir. The friend of Jesus who died. Yes, sir. And Jesus did not attend the funeral. That was painful. Let's go. Imagine your best friend. But it was a prophetic problem for prophetic manifestation. Yes, sir. That is so. What did they do in verse 1? Now a certain man was sick named who? Lazarus. Of where? Of Bethany. The town of who? Mary and her sister Martha. Aha, uh -huh. it was the same Mary who did what? Who anointed the Lord with what? With ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. Aha. Uh -huh. Whose brother Lazarus was sick. My goodness, aha. Uh -huh. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, uh -huh. saying, Lord, uh -huh. Uh -huh. behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Ah. Uh, mm. They didn't write their name. They said, who, he whom you love. Mm. Yes, sir. Ah, this is a letter of saying, move fast. Yes, sir. <laughs> the one you love. Not the one you hugged, the one you love. They expected Jesus to move. Ah, but the king of glory did not move. Verse 14. Verse 14. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, uh -huh. Lazarus is dead. Uh -huh. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. That I was not there. Uh -huh. To the intent ye may believe. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. But Thomas said what? Uh -huh. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, uh -huh. unto his fellow disciples. Uh -huh. Let us also go, that we may die with him. Ah, <laughs> uh, he was scared. Remember that time uh, they were looking for Jesus? Yes, sir. And the same place is going, they nearly stoned him. Mm -hmm. So, if he, uh, who's this guy? Uh, Thomas says, ah, let us go and die. we we'll just die there. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Read 22 for me. Verse 22. Uh -huh. Verse 21. 21 for the sake of context. Uh -huh. Then said Martha unto Jesus, uh -huh. Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Uh -huh. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, my God. God will give it thee. Uh -huh. Jesus saith unto her, uh -huh. Thy brother shall rise again. Mm -hmm. Martha saith unto him, mm -hmm. I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. 34. 34. And said, where have ye laid him? My God. They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And what? And Jesus did what? Jesus wept. And when, when the people said what in verse 37? Verse 37. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind uh -huh. have caused that even this man should not have died? Hey, people. Okay, now let's read verse 38. Verse 38. Jesus therefore again, mm -hmm. groaning in himself, uh -huh. cometh to the grave. Uh -huh. It was a cave, uh -huh. and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take away what? Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Verse 40 says what? 
Jesus saith unto her, uh -huh. Said I not unto thee, mm -hmm. that if thou wouldest believe, you will see what? Thou shouldest see the glory of God. Verse 41 will finish you. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Uh -huh. And Jesus lifted, lifted up, up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you had me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -uh, wait, yes, sir. church. Are you there? Yeah. Father, I thank you that you had me. But wait a minute. What time did Jesus pray? I'm asking you. You're reading your Bible, isn't it? What time did Jesus pray? What time did Jesus talk to the Father when he said, I thank you because you had me? And he says, I knew that thou hearest me always. But in verse 41, he says, I thank you because you have heard me. Amen. Very simple. God heard him in verse 38. Read it. Verse 38. Jesus therefore again. again. Groaning in himself. Yes, so Jesus was groaning. In himself. So according to Romans 8.26, whenever there is a groaning, is the spirit praying within. Yes, sir. Amen. When you yes, groan, you're not the one praying. Yes, sir. You don't activate groaning. Hence, I said you can you can be with 1,000 or 10,000 believers, mm -hmm. and among those, you only find one person groaning. Yes, sir. Because you don't activate groaning. Yes, sir. Uh -uh. It says when we groan, it is the spirit that prayeth. Yes, sir. Yes, Meaning sir. God is the one praying through you. Groaning is not you praying because you have decided to pray. Yes, uh -uh. Yes, it's sir. not you going to the corner. Oh, no. God begins to pray through men. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is a dimension where prayer begins to pray through you. Mm -hmm. Then there is a dimension where God begins to pray through you. Yes, you are sir. praying to God, but God prays to God through you. Mm -hmm. oh. That is groaning. Some of you I know, you are hearing about this for the first time. But don't worry. I know the Holy Spirit will give you interpretation. Mm -hmm. And some of you in five years, not so long from now, in five years, you will know what exactly what we are talking about. You'll be like, ah, ah, that was powerful. And that's why sometimes I don't argue with somebody who when they hear me minister, they come and they say whatever they say. Sometimes I'll be like, you will catch it in three years. In 10 years, you'll get it. And when you get it, you'll come because I used to back then try to explain, try to explain, try to explain. But then I got, I, I got to understand that no, is the level they are in. Yes. Are we together? Yes, sir. So now watch this. So the first now operation is groaning. And this one is not for everybody. Amen. It hardly happens. Some people can groan once in their lifetime. Some five times in their lifetimes. True. So we must not deceive each other. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is a difference between somebody who is groaning and somebody who is chanting. People confuse that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Groaning is not chanting. Mm. Chanting is not groaning. Mm. A lot of people chant mm. and they think they are groaning. Yes, sir. The second one, write it down. Diverse kinds of tongues. Yes, sir. We're talking about opera, four operations of tongues. Diverse kinds of tongues. This one is the one Paul is speaking about in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where he speaks about different gifts but the same spirit. He says to another, diverse of tongues mm. are we together yes, sir. here you are speaking uh i want to put it in a way that you'll understand you are you this is you speaking unknown language right mm. as a matter of fact you are speaking a known language yet unknown to you that's what i was looking for yes sir yes sir so when somebody speaks in diverse uh, 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 kinds of tongues. Mm -hmm. They are speaking in a language that it is known, but unknown to them. Yes, sir. This is where a Shangani is speaking in Mandarin. Mm. This Shangani has never been in China. But how come they are speaking Chinese? Mm. Mm. This is where a Kosa is speaking in Swahili. Yes, sir. This is where somebody in Netherlands is speaking in Tswana. Mm -hmm. These are diverse yes, kinds of tongues. Mm -hmm. So what happened on the day of Pentecost, they spoke in diverse kinds of tongues. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the Bible says, and there were what? Men outside celebrating what? Pentecost. Mm -hmm. They said, how come these men speak in our tongue? Yet they are Galileans. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
And when you study and observe the book of Acts, you realize that there were 17 nations in there. And all of them could hear them speak in their own language. Now, there is a mystery. They say, what is the mystery, Apostle? The mystery is that when you speak in tongues, you reach. Let me explain it. The gospel reached 17 languages. Yes, sir. Because when you speak in tongues, you reach. Yes, sir. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, if you want to reach more people, learn to speak in tongues more. Mm. Oh, my God. It will make sense in a while. Let's continue. Let me not uh, confuse you. So that's diverse kinds of what? Of tongues. And that's what Paul is talking about in 1 Corinthians 12. Then we have giving a message, prophesying in tongues. This is where you are giving a message, right? Paul speaks about it in 1 Corinthians uh, 14. And you read verses 6 and verses 7. And he says somebody must interpret. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there are those who speak in tongues because inside those tongues, there is what? Prophecy encoded. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So in order for us to decode it, somebody must interpret. Yes, sir. So when I speak in tongues, right, mm. it's not every time I'm speaking in tongues because of maybe groaning or because of I have a gift of diverse kinds of tongues. No, I've already explained. So I'm actually helping you to understand the difference. Yes, sir. To say it's not the one thing. It's not one thing. Yes, sir. So there are times where somebody speaks in tongues, yet what they're speaking is a message. Mm. Mm. And Paul says that person needs what? To have an interpreter. Yes, sir. That's why I say, Paul says, it does not benefit anybody. Mm. I would rather have you prophesy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let, let, let's go to the Bible. Maybe you'll hear the Bible. The last one, last but not least, in the four operations, because of time I'm rushing, is edifying yourself. Mm. So when I'm edifying yourself means praying in tongues. Yes, sir. Oh, you, you, you. Yes. Uh, I think you. So praying in tongues is edifying yourself. Yes, sir. So if I'm praying in tongues, I'm edifying myself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are speaking in tongues or praying in tongues to charge yourself. Yes, sir. Listen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. If you guys want us to go deeper, I can go deeper. I'm always ready in the Holy Ghost. I'm always ready in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Follow after charity. No, the, what, which verse is that? It's this one. Read verse 14. Verse 14. Yes. For if I pray in an unknown tongue. What is he saying? For if I pray in an unknown tongue. Is the tongue known? No. The tongue is what? Unknown. unknown. What is he saying? Uh huh. My spirit prayeth. You see the difference between praying in an unknown tongue and groaning? Yes, sir. When you groan, is the Holy Ghost. Yes. But when you speak in an unknown tongue, your spirit is the one that is praying. Uh -huh. But my understanding is unfruitful. But my understanding is unfruitful. Yes, sir. What is it then? I will what? Come on. Verse 15. What is it then? Mm -hmm. I will pray with the spirit. He says, I will pray in the spirit. Another version, with the spirit. Yes, sir. Did you see that? Yes, sir. Everybody pay attention to what Paul is saying. Yes, sir. Look at me to understand what is happening here. He says, I will pray. I will. I will. I will. Mm, mm. It's a decision. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord. Amen. The problem with babies is that they think, you see, of course, when you start, yeah. it takes over you. Yes, sir. But as you go, it's a it becomes yes, a decision. Yes, sir. I don't know if you guys. So it's not, so I'm talking to people who think it has to be like, he has to come, you roll five times. And you start speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. He has to come, the Holy Ghost, as if he leaves. And he comes back, he visits you. And you start rolling on the ground and say, that said the Lord. And you start, ba, 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 ba. No! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's misleading. Mm -hmm. He says, I will. Hence, I said, everybody should. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, me. Yes, me. Yes, me. He says, I will. Yes, sir. Let's go deeper. Mm -hmm. I will pray with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I will pray with the understanding also. He says, I will pray with the understanding also. Yes, sir. You see, if I say to you, I will go with this car and I will meet five people who are this and this. 
also this one. You see now? Yes, sir. It means what I said first, you need to pay attention to. It's, it's more important. Yes, sir. He says, I will pray in the spirit also. He doesn't say, I will pray in understanding also in the spirit. No. Mm. He first starts in the spirit. Then he says, also in my understanding. Yes, sir. Finish it. I will sing with the spirit. Uh huh. And I will sing with the understanding so, also. So you, you only sing with understanding also. Yes. Paul says, in the spirit, with the spirit, I will sing. Yes, sir. Come on, church. Oh, yes. You want to be a custodian of glory. Be a woman and a man who speaks in tongues. Yes, sir. Be a man and a woman who speaks in tongues. That's so. I don't know if you want us to go. You want us to go deeper. Yes, sir. Let's go to verse one. Ah, verse two. Verse two. Mm. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, uh -huh. but unto God. So why do you worry? Uh huh. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit, uh-huh? How be it in the spirit, he speaketh mystery. So why do you want to be understood? Why do you want to explain tongues? Yeah, the Bible says you don't understand. Your mind is unfruitful. You are speaking mystery. You know what mysteries are? Mysterion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If it can be decoded, it's no longer a mystery. Mm. It's a revelation. Yes, sir. It's prophecy. Yes, sir. So why will I pray? Yet nobody's understanding me. Are you praying to them? You see yourself now. Yes, yeah. So why will I pray yet people don't hear me? Are you praying to people? Yes, sir. Read the Bible. It says you speak, you speak in mysteries unto God. God dines in mysteries. There is a certain level of prayer. Where prayer is no longer prayer, it becomes a dining place. I don't know. I don't know if they are getting it. I don't know if they are getting it. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Talk to me, Apostle. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Talk to me, Apostle. In maturity, you don't have to prove anything. Mm. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes. There is a lady here, you are watching me, you have a gum problem. That said, the Lord, you will begin to speak in tongues and you look for that pain. It won't be there anymore. That is so. Zoom, are you still here? Zoom, are you still here? Are you still here? I want to see you. Paliga baronda la akreveheski atakabaya. Every nation, Pastor Brian has a language. Yes, sir. And listen to me. Do you know you reach nations in the spirit before you reach them physically? Mm. <laughs> yes, I wish yes, I could say it better. Yes, <laughs> Uh, ay, 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 ay. Listen to this. Do you know that on the day of the Pentecost, Peter did not start healing people when he laid his hand on them? Yes, sir. Okay. When you read Acts 1, right? No, Acts 1 8, he, they are promised power. Yes, sir. Yes. Acts 2, power comes. Yes, sir. In Acts 4, they are beginning to release something. In Acts 6, they are hearing them. Yes, sir. Watch this now. What did the people say when they heard the apostles speaking? They did not only say, how come we are hearing them speaking in our own tongue? No, read your Bible. They said, how come we hear them speaking the wonderful works of God? So the people could hear the disciples, the apostles, speaking the wonderful works of God in their own languages. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what the apostles were saying were the wonderful words. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say, talk to me, apostle. Talk to me, apostle. Say, talk to me, apostle. Talk to me, apostle. So you will realize that Peter did not heal the sick when he laid hands. He healed the sick when he was speaking in tongues. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because he was speaking the wonderful words of God. Aya. 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 So if they spoke and there were 17 languages in the book of Acts, it means that's how far the gospel reached. Yes, sir. 
because they had them speak the wonderful works of God. And I want to say something there. You see, the Bible declares that 3,000 men on that very day got saved. Yes. Repentant. Here's the mystery. Where were the men coming from? Remember, say, say it, Apostle. Say it, Apostle. The Holy Ghost is not Pentecost. Yes, sir. I know you leave this broadcast, but it's okay. The Holy Ghost is not Pentecost. Mm -hmm. They are angry. I will say it again. Pentecost is here. The Holy Spirit is here. Yes. The Holy Spirit is not Pentecost. Yes, sir. Pentecost is not another name of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. it does not say when they were gathered together, Pentecost came. Yes, sir. It says on the day of Pentecost. Pent means five. We know that. Yes, so it was a Jewish celebration yes, that happened every 50 years. Yes, Once in a while it will happen. It was a Jewish celebration. We know that. Yes, sir. And it was called Pentecost. That was not the first Pentecost. Mm -hmm. So Pentecost has been happening. Mm -hmm. But why will the Holy Spirit come on the day of Pentecost? Mm -hmm. Because remember, when the Bible, Paul writes, he says, the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives yes, life. Sir. Yes, sir. Meaning, if you go for the letter, you die. Yes, sir. And the reason why he's saying that is because when the law was given, 3,000 men died. Yes, sir. Meaning yes, sir. the letter, which is the law, yes. killed 3,000 men. Mm -hmm. Hence, Paul says, the letter killeth. So, but now, for God, remember, the letter killer, the spirit gives life. Mm. For God to make sure that on the very day of the spirit, people must give, must gain life or must receive life. He had to make sure that it was on that specific day where everybody had gathered. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you are going to observe by the Holy Spirit that when the Holy Ghost came, he did not come on people who were celebrating the Pentecost. Mm. He came on those who were not part of the celebration and those were the disciples praying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Those who were there for the Pentecost are not the ones who received the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. But the Holy Ghost came on those who were not even celebrating Pentecost. Yes, sir. So when the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, it does not say on the day of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Pentecost is here. The Holy Spirit is here. Yes, Pentecost is not another name of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. The devil is a liar. And the Holy Ghost came on those who were not celebrating Pentecost. Mm -hmm. It was so that when Peter stood up and said, these are the words of Jewel, blah, blah, blah. Then when he said repent, and the Bible says 3,000 men repented. But remember, when the law came, 3,000 men died. When the Spirit came, 3,000 men lived. The letter killeth, the law killeth, the Spirit gives life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But how was that going to happen if it happened in a normal day? Maybe only five people or 50 people, or 500 people were going to be saved. Yes, but they were able to hear them because where they were in Jerusalem, they were celebrating Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And Jesus had to be specific. He said, stay in Jerusalem. These were men, were, were, were men of Galilee. Yes. But he said, stay in Jerusalem. Yes, sir. And the Pentecost happened in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I know I, 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 I disturbed your peace there. Because ever since you got born again, Ever since you got saved, all you knew or all you thought was the Holy Spirit is also Pentecost. So if somebody, and whenever somebody says Pentecost, every time it's like you feel fire. You'll be like, when somebody says Pentecost, and you're like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry to, 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 to actually spoil whatever you knew. The Holy Spirit is not Pentecost. Glory be to God. Come on now. Look, look at how angry you are. Look, look at how angry you are. <laughs> Smile. I'm helping you. The more you know, the more you function. The less you know, the less you function. The Bible says, by knowledge, the righteous shall be delivered. You yourself, you will not find any translation that says the Holy Spirit is Pentecost. It was celebration. It's like now saying on Christmas, the Holy Ghost came. And we start calling the Holy Ghost Christmas. Yes, it's a celebration. Yes, it's a holiday. On that day where the Holy Spirit came. Yes, 
Ah, my people are no longer saying amen. amen Jesus. Shall we move forward? Oh, dear. Ah, I'm, I'm not tired. <laughs> Somebody just left the broker. I'm just saying, mm -mm, not this one. Me, I know what I know. I've met people who say, me, I know what I know. I'm telling you, like they, I say, me, I know what I know. You can't tell me anything. So what do you know? They can't even explain what they know. But they think they know. Ignorance is our greatest enemy yes, as God's children. Yes, say, talk to me, Major. Talk to me, Major. So whenever we speak in tongues, we are not only edifying ourselves. In the spirit, according to the book of Jude 1, 20, we are building ourselves up. Read it quickly. Last scripture of the day. We are building ourselves up. Read it. You are charging yourself. Uh huh. Jude 20. Yes. But ye, beloved, mm -hmm. building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Mm -hmm. Praying. Building up yourself on your most holy, holy faith. Meaning your faith is strengthened. You can go to the prayer closet weak, where your faith is on a sick leave. And you begin to pray in tongues. And as you pray in tongues, you will strengthen your own faith. Amen. Let's go. But ye, beloved, yes. building up yourselves on your most holy faith, uh -huh. praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. And the reason why you have to strengthen your faith is because angels don't respond to fear, but they respond to faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if your faith is weak, also you will not experience activity or an activity or a movement or the ministry of angels you can't have weak faith and experience that so that's why tongues now that's why people who speak in tongues don't have this boldness they'll have this strength they'll have this certain they will have a certain level of faith is because every time you speak in tongues you are strengthening your faith glory be to god when you speak in tongues, you are releasing your spirit from being captured. I will give an example. We are driving, coming back from Pumalanga with my team. Please be seated. With my team, four cars like this. All of a sudden, a car comes like this. But before it came, just about a minute before, minute before it happened, we had just said, that is so. A few minutes before it happened, we had just said, that is so. We had finished praying. So we are driving with my team. And I gave an announcement right there to all the cars that were there because it was a lot of cars. And I said, everybody speak in what? Tongues. Do you guys remember? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And everybody began to speak in tongues. Yes, sir. And after a few minutes, I said, that is so. And everybody said, that is so. Everybody was like, thank you, Major. Thank you, Major. Then I told them, there is something happening in the spirit. But we have prayed. While we are talking, a guy came driving. It's one lane, but the guy, we, we don't even know where the guy is coming from like this if i was to tell you the miracle there it will blow your mind that literally one car that was amongst our cars was picked up by angels like this and put here how did we escape that one is because when you speak in tongues you release your spirit it can't be kept even death cannot capture your spirit <laughs> i wish i could tell you more you know, there are certain things, every time I want to say them, it's like my mind locks and my tongue gets twisted, like, mm -mm, not now. So, like, uh, my man of God said something very powerful. They asked him a question about a certain man of God. Uh, I don't talk about men of God, so even if you were to ask me, I wouldn't respond anyway, because I talk, I talk the Bible. So the only people that I will mention all of that are people that, one way or the other, they are part of my family. Are we together? So, my man of God, they asked my man of God, do you think the man of God was wrong when he said what he said? My man of God said, the man of God was wrong only in one thing. He spoke to the wrong crowd. <laughs> I'm telling you, the revelation can be very powerful. But once you speak it to wrong people, immature people, babies, oh, they will attack something that they should actually be learning from. And in 50 years from now, they're like, ah, ah, it now makes sense. That's why you should never jump into conclusions. Revelation is progressive. Yes. If you know it this way, it doesn't mean that's how it is. Yes. Because when it comes to God, when we look at revelation, we don't use point of view, we use viewpoint. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm a 
<laughs> I can hold this and say, what am I holding here? What am I holding here, Sister Beren? What am I holding here, Pastor Brian? What am I holding here, Reverend Gudan? What am I holding here, Sister Nongas Mood? What am I holding here, uh, Uncle Peter? What am I holding here, uh, Brother KB? It's a pen. But if you were to ask me what am I holding, I would tell you I'm, I'm holding a black pen and it's also gray. It's written, my year of flourishing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and you won't say I'm lying. Ah, uh -uh, you won't. Because yeah. the pen is black. Yes, sir. And it is also gray. Yes, sir. And it's written, my year of flourishing. Yes, sir. It's not just a pen. It's not just a pen. Yeah. You see? So they saw what I, they saw and I saw what I saw. Yes, but we are all trying to define one thing. So there are those when they go for revelation, they will go for the obvious. Mm. Then there are those who will dig deeper. Amen. You want to be a custodian of power, learn to speak in tongues. Amen. I will repeat again. In psychology, and I said this, this is, an advan this, this, this is why it's important to speak in tongues. In psychology, apparently, somebody who owns a car is two days ahead of somebody who does not own a car. Two days and eight hours or something ahead of somebody. That's what psychology says. Yeah. So if you own a car, you are two days ahead of somebody who does not own a car. Two days, eight hours. So when the person has to bath and go to a bus stop and then the bus is stopping here, stopping, picking up, dropping, you, you are driving straight. Yes, and those hours, they match up to two days. Yes, eight hours at least. Every time you are ahead of that person like that. If they want to go to the mall, shopping mall, and they want to wait for the bus or anything and request an Uber, you, you are gone. Wow. That time when they are waiting for your Uber, you, you go. Yes, sir. So a, Christians that's, a Christian that speaks in tongues is a generation ahead mm. from a Christian who does not speak in tongues. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So a lot of people say, but how do I speak in tongues? The Holy Ghost. Are we together? Amen. Speaking in tongues is by faith. Some of you, you are waiting for God to twist your tongue. And he has given you the spirit. I'm telling you the truth. You are waiting for God to just twist. Paul says, I will. When he comes, that's why when he came for the first time in my life, I remember I didn't want to stop speaking in tongues. Oh, God. I was speaking in tongues the whole night. I was afraid that the moment I stop, this thing won't come back again. That's true. The whole night I was speaking in tongues. Ooh, I was bubbling up. Hey, there was a stirring on the inside. I could not believe I was speaking in tongues. Listen. I was speaking in tongues. And I was actually in the first level of speaking in tongues. But when I was speaking in tongues, I was in the first level, second level, and third level at the same time. Come on. Are we together? Yes, sir. Yes. I was, I was in stammering tongues, yes. But at the same time, I was uttering tongues. There's a dimension called uttering tongues. Mm. Not utterance in the sense of the day of Pentecost. I will teach about that one day. And once you when it hits you, you can even say one word the whole night. Yes, sir. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel something. Ah, I feel something. Come on. May you be unlocked in the Holy Ghost. That is that is so. So. That is so. Let me tell you a secret. I don't prophesy when I get to church. Mm. Yes, sir. Mm. Amen. I don't heal people who are sick by the power of the Holy Ghost when I get to church. Mm. Amen. No. That's why when you, when, if you have ever seen Apostle Me's movie in Deliverance, it happens so fast. Amen. No matter the demon, you have never seen me. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. I'm not built that way in the Holy Ghost. No. 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 In my years of walking with God, I've understood mysteries. I was in Botswana there, and there was a woman of God. Uh, my daughter, who's our national pastor in Botswana, an ambassador of New Life in Botswana, she was there, a service that they organized. And, you know, we advertised it like two days, and then we were there. And it was packed the hall. 
Yes, I got there, there is a woman of God, there, a woman, <clears throat> like a sister in the Holy Ghost. I said, there is a spirit in you. How do you tell somebody yes, sir. who is known that there is spirit in them? She, she, when I came next to her, she was very happy that I was going to prophesy. I told her there is a spirit that I, I even said it's a monitoring spirit, yes, if you remember. Yes, she was shocked. I said, don't worry, don't look at me that way. Once I open my mouth and pray, that spirit will check out everybody who see it, even you will see it. She started looking at me like, you know, you know how it is. I'm a Christian, you can't tell me there is a spirit. Wait, wait, in her mind that she didn't say that loud. I just pointed and said, you come out. She started manifesting. Yes, sir. People who came with her are shocked. This woman has been praying for us. Where is this coming from? And it didn't take time. We are not there to negotiate. And I met, I met another woman at the back yes, sir. who was having documents. Yes, so she was giving me documents. I held those documents. I said, the problem is not in the documents. Yes, I went to the woman. Yes, and as I went to the woman, I looked straight into her eyes. A demon checked out. Yes, sir. And the demon said, we have been in church. Remember? Yes, sir. For a long time. Yes, sir. And we have been in churches. Nobody has ever located us. Yes, sir. And then he said, that lady was like, who are you? I said, I'm not here to give you my name or explain myself. I'm here for one thing. Out. Yes, sir. Hey. Right there in Botswana. Yeah. Who am I? It doesn't matter. I'm a custodian of glory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Custodian of power. Yes, sir. Custodian of dimensions. That is so. I come in the name of the Lord. That is so. Even there, in your life there, another lady, she went home, she doesn't know what happened. I think she's watching my daughter. And when she went home, I said, when you went home, there's something that entered in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She's shocked. Yes, sir. I said, don't worry. Let's not be shocked. Then. The kingdom of God is not in words, but in the demonstration of power. I said, once I pray, don't worry. Let me pray. Once I pray, it will come. And when I was praying, what happened? That demon was coming out. Why? Hear me. It's because I spend time praying in tongues. Yes, sir. Paul says, I speak in a tongue of men. Mm -hmm. But he also taps in in a tongue of angels. Mm -hmm. And some of you are just hearing things when I'm talking to you like this. And I'm not saying, of course, you know, you pray, pray, and the next thing you prophesy. There they, 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 they are spiritual laws, yes, protocols that one must understand. And you cannot force yourself into something that you are not capacitated or equipped, you know, in operating in. You, you, you get the point. So, so, but now, with, um, with, with the gift that God has given me, the moment I pray in tongues, I always see. I always hear when people pray in tongues. And I prayed, believe it or not, for the gift of interpretation of tongues. I prayed for it. Mm -hmm. And one time all of a sudden when people were starting praying, I could hear what they are saying. Mm -hmm. But it was not there I prayed for it. Mm -hmm. I don't start healing people when I get there. Yes, sir. That's why when I see, and I want, I want to say it in, 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 good, in a good way, please. When I see blind people, when I see deaf people, when I see crimple people coming inside the church, my heart gets excited. Oh, yeah. Why? Because they are going to see the power of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now, not so long, that boy who came was yes, blind. Sir. And I just went there, and I just yeah. did one, two, yeah. and did this, just on his eyes like this. Yeah. And the person who came with him was like, we thought this guy was going to lay his hand and pray and do some things. And the moment I moved, yes, sir. and I was praying for another person, the person held their waist. Is he done? They said, yeah, he's done. That guy can see now. Everybody's shocked. How come? You, you think it happened at that moment. Jesus will spend four hours praying. It will take him four seconds to cast the devil out. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm releasing mysteries unto you. Yes, sir. Was it not in Botswana in 2019 when a baby was born blind was brought in the church? And I gave an instruction. There was a woman who was carried, if you guys remember. Yes, sir. She could not walk. She was carried by some boys who were coming to church. Yes, sir. And they carried that woman to church. Mm -hmm. And right there as I was praying for all those people who could not walk and people who could not see, who could not hear. As I went at the back, the boy is two years, but born blind. Yes, Listen, it's not that like the person was, was, could see and went blind. 
born blind for two years the person is blind and how was she blind she didn't have the pupil that black thing the, the, the eyes everything was white so she didn't have the black thing that we have I go at the back, multitudes of people. I go at the back. I stood there behind. As I stood at the back there, I'm busy. I gave an instruction. Yes, sir. Anoint people with anointing oil. Mm. They began to anoint people. The Bible says, if anyone is sick, let him call for the elders. Yes, sir. Let him be anointed by with the elders with the anointing oil. Yes, sir. The Bible says, and the disciples of Jesus in Mark, I'm helping somebody, oh, yeah. healed the sick and anointed people. With anointing oil. Yes, the sir. disciples who were with yes, Jesus face to face. Yes, they still anointed people. The mystery of anointing goes beyond the bottle you see. Yes, it's sir. like Holy Communion. Yes. If you believe in Holy Communion and you don't believe in anointing, something went wrong somewhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, don't you buy it in Checkers Day? Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you people, it's okay. <laughs> We believe the handkerchiefs could contain the anointing. <laughs> we clap when we hear that. The shadow of Peter. Mm. Come on, church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, as they were anointing people, then they tell me, this baby was born blind. As I'm coming, and I went closer to the baby. Peter, you were there, right? Yes, sir. You were with me. Yes, sir. And right there, I'm touching the baby's hand. I've not yet prayed for the baby, but they've anointed the baby already. And as I'm touching the baby, I just heard a huge scream. When I looked, the mother is screaming. When I looked, right at that spot, and yes, sir. we had pictures, and we still have them. Yes, sir. You know, even a video, of course. Before and after. In the pictures, you literally see it coming up. Even in the video. Are we together? Yes, sir. And I'm there, the mother is screaming. When I look, this black thing just appeared. Mm. And the baby started looking around. Hey. How do you explain that? Custodians of glory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, no, no. We are not ashamed. Oh, yeah. we, we, we boldly declare it and we confess it that we are mightily used by God. Oh, yes. And that is because we are custodians of glory. That is so. How do you explain a man called Eliezer, the son of Dodo? Mm -hmm. One of the mighty men of David. Do you know Eliezer, how he came to be? Hey. Ah, let me close my Bible. No, I'll just close my Bible. Pastor Brian, yes, I'm done here. I'm, I'm, I'm done here. Uh, I'm telling you, it's too deep. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I believe it should be chapter 11. Watch this. No, also the book of uh, uh, Second Samuel. Yes, sir. Watch this now. The Bible tells us about Eliezer, the son of Dodo. Yes, sir. How did this man? I wish I could find that scripture. I think it's. Um, start with First Corinthians. Chapter 11. No, Chronicles, not Corinthians. Chronicles, it can't be Corinthians. Chronicles. Chapter 11. Read verse 2 for me. Start with it. You better be fast, my daughter. Chronicles chapter 11, verse 2. Yes. And moreover, in time past, even when Saul was king, thou wast he that led us out. What, 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 what chapter is that? It's first Chronicles chapter 11. Read chapter 12. Uh huh. While he yet kept himself close, the uh -huh. of Saul, the son of Kish. Uh huh. And they were among the mighty men, mm -hmm. helpers of the war. Come on. They were armed with bows mm -hmm. and could use both the right hand and the left in hurling stones mm -hmm. and shooting arrows out of a bow, mm -hmm. even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. The chief was Ahiza, mm -hmm. then Joash, the sons of Shema. The Gibeathite mm -hmm. and Jeziel and Pelet, 
the sons of Azmabel, mm -hmm. and Barak, and Jehu, the Anchotite, mm -hmm. and Ismaya, mm -hmm. the Gibeonite, mm -hmm. and mighty men among the thirty, ah, yeah. and over the thirty, mm -hmm. and Jeremiah, mm -hmm. and Jehaziel, and Johanan, mm -hmm. and Jozabad, the Ge the Ge but now when it starts, it speaks about Ziklag. Amen. This is when they took the wife, two wives of yes, David. Sir. Yes, sir. And he asked the Lord, should I go after them? Read 11 verse 11. If you don't find it in 11 verse 11, somebody removed it in the Bible. It's not me. First Corinthians, uh, first Chronicles. Chronicles mm. chapter 11 verse 11. Yes. And this is the number of the mighty men whom David had. Talk to me. Jashobim. Ah, that guy was dangerous. I think Jashobim was, um, just hold on, uh, Hakomite. Was he a Hakomite? Yes, yes, what does it say there? It says, and Hakmonite. Hakmonite. He was a Hakmonite. Yes. This guy killed 300 men yes, one sir. time. Yes, sir. 300 yes, men one time. Yes, one time yes, alone. Yes, one time he killed 800 yes, men alone. He was dangerous. Continue. The chief of the captains, mm -hmm. he lifted up his spear against 300 slain by him at one time. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You are not hearing it. I'm about to explain it. Let's go. And after him was Eliezer. Ah! Continue, sister. The son of Dodo. The son of Dodo. The Apohite. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He was one of the three mighty. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was with David mm. and passed a meme. Mm. And there were the Philistines. Mm. Watch this. They gathered together to battle. Uh -huh. Where was a parcel of ground uh -huh. full of body. My God. And the people fled from before the Philistines. Uh -huh. And they set themselves in the midst of that parcel. Uh -huh. And delivered it. Uh -huh. And slew the Philistines. Watch this. Uh -huh. And the Lord saved them by a great deliverance. Watch this now. Mm. Eliezer. Right? We see him first in the book of 2 Samuel. Yes, sir. Let me explain yes, sir. to you so you guys understand how this mighty man... Because it was not only uh, that guy that you mentioned. I, I always forget his name. I think it's like something like uh, Josh, Josh, Josh Obim. Yeah, Josh Obim. Right? The Hakomite. Yes, there was also Adino. Yes, sir. Is, is there Adino there? I don't think he's, is there Adino. Is Adino there? No. Or Adino should be in the book of 2 Samuel. Right? So there's Adino... And I believe Adino was uh, an S knight. Right? These guys, how did David meet them? Remember, David went to a cave of Adulam. Yes, sir. And when he was hiding there, yes, his family came. And 400 men who were yes, in debt, who were distressed, who were poor, came along. Yes, sir. These men were hopeless. Yes, sir. These were ordinary men. Mm. And the men we are reading about yes, were once ordinary. Yes, sir. But David knew mysteries. Yes, sir. David knew things that activated something in this man. Yes, sir. That Eliezer, the Bible says, he fought until he became one with the sword. Uh, read your Bible. The Bible says, and the sword cleaved yes, in the hand of Eliezer. Mm -hmm. And he killed 800 men. Yes, sir. After that, he went for 1,000 men. Eliezer, yes, one sir. man. Yes, sir. The Bible calls these three. Actually, there were six. Then they went down to three. Yes, the sir. mighty men of David. Yes, sir. Not the mighty men of God. <laughs> these ones were imparted by David. <laughs> you must read. You must read. Listen to me. In the book of 2 Samuel, it tells us that when, Samuel, when, when David left Gath, Yes, sir. He went to a cave of Adullam. Yeah. Mm, mm. And there his family joined him. Yes, because sir. remember, Saul wanted to kill him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And 400 men who were in debt. That's what the Bible says. Who were distressed. Yes, who were poor. Yes, who were rejected. Yes, Just sir. came like this. David said, don't worry. I will turn you into mighty men. Yes, <laughs> ay, 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 ay. You can be ordinary. Yes, sir. But there are moments that when you enter them, when you come out, you yourself, you feel I'm no longer the same. Yes, sir. I'm continuing on Wednesday. I'm doing part three of this. Because part two of spiritual dimensions, we have not entered it as yet. This was to unlock something in you. Come on, wave your hand in the Holy Ghost. 
Wave your hand in the Holy Ghost. I said, wave your hand in the Holy Ghost. You can do better. You can do better. Malika Barosha, Takiva Handa. You can do better in the Holy Ghost. Wave your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand. Kalandre Heveske de la Akronaiva. That is so. Those that were wondering, where is this? Is in 2 Samuel chapter 23, and you read verses 9. Speaks about the Eliezer son of Dodo. Yes, Men fought until he became one with the sword. Kalandre and Lile Akrosavia Tahi. That is so. Elina Ankro Saveda Balaki. Zegdili Akrosatavia. So those that are asking, uh, when did he went to the cave of Adulam? It was in First Samuel chapter 22, verse 2. Yes, so it's important for you to know this. Yes, because it connects all the way. That even remember. Uh, here when Samuel died David did not know who he was going to hear from and the Bible says there came God oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God the seer yeah. uh, that one was dangerous mm. uh, we know God. God, God was a seer yes, sir. say glory somebody glory. we are having a school called the school online prophetic school of dreamers online prophetic school of dreamers i believe registrations will be opened tomorrow if they are not opened i i think tomorrow and i believe registrations will be open and the school is taking place september so you still have all the time glory be to god i think it's starting somewhere on the eighth i'm not sure when would you guys know does anybody know i think it's also on our website or something I think uh, it's also on our website. But somewhere mid-September. It's mid-September. I believe it's mid-September. Please get the dates right so that our people will know exactly where is what. Get the dates right. Somebody saying, how do I join? Uh, the, the poster will be out soon, either tomorrow or Tuesday latest. I believe Tuesday latest, the team will put it up for you. Glory be to God. We'll put it up for you. There we have it. It's uh, 21 and 22 September. Yeah, that's, that's far. Amen. 21 and 22 September 2023. Amen. We are not even on the 15th of August as yet. So you still have time. So I think the poster will come out. Don't miss the online a uh, prophetic school of dreamers. Amen. And if you are here and you are saying, Apostle, you have been a blessing in my life. Apostle, your ministry and your ministration is blessing me mightily. This is what I will ask you to do. I ask you to pray for our ministry and I ask you to pray for us. Amen. So that the Lord himself will strengthen us Amen. and give us more revelation. Because I believe if we are a blessing to you, we can also be a blessing to somebody. Amen. So the best gift you can ever give us is to lift us up in prayer. Amen. And also this coming week, I'll be meeting with all my sons and daughters Amen. all over the world. Amen. So there will be a post as well that states that if you are a son or a daughter of Apostle Mies, and uh, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You click a link and then you sign up for, for free, for, of course. Uh, it will be me meeting you personally. One-on-one, yes, -on -one, me getting to know you on a certain date. Amen. So sons and daughters of Apostle Miss will gather. And that is because for a long time, if you know me, yes, you know me. Yes, if there's one thing I run away from and I play far from, is this thing of papa and son and a daughter. Yes, it's not my language. Yes, are we together? Amen. That's why you hardly see me, you know, with people who have churches saying, this is my father. I do have sons, but the sons that I have, believe it or not, are sons I had a long time ago. And I've had people travel, fly from USA, Brazil, you name it, saying, God said you are my father. Then I would tell them, no, God did not speak to me about it. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. And some I would tell them that is not yet time. But the Holy Spirit, last week, Wednesday, he told me now it's time. Amen. Amen. So what that means is, 
if you are there and you know that this is my spiritual father. I mean, when you know, you know. And the first time you heard me, it was as if you could relate to my messages. The revelation that I minister is a revelation you live by. It is as if I'm talking your language. It is as if you are like, mm -mm, I've never heard it said it this way. I've never heard a man talk like this. No, it's not because you have never heard men talk like this. They are more powerful men of God if you don't know. The reason why you are hearing it that way is because you have my DNA. Amen. Amen. So now the time is long overdue. The door has been closed for a long time, for years. Now we are going to open it. And people are going to sign up there and um, you know register then the team will give them time date to meet with the apostle and right there it's gonna be a prophetic moment Amen. i can't wait to have you on board i'm excited about that Amen. i prayed about it and i said god is it really time god said it's time <laughs> i want you to raise them for me and only for me i said father i'm available and i'm willing Remember, the kingdom of God is not based on ability, but availability. Yes, sir. So I'm excited. I'm excited. So if you are there and you did not know how to approach me, or you did not know what to say, and you have texted before and nobody answered, I'm sure this, I'm sure this is good news. Amen. Amen. It's your time now. Amen. Glory be to God. As the Spirit of God leads you. Glory. I can't wait to meet those people. I know it's going to be bizarre, but I can't wait to meet them. Amen. It's time now. Amen. It's time. <laughs> All right. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you did not uh, get an opportunity to give today to sow during our service, even if you did and you feel like in your spirit you want to give, you want to sow, go ahead and just give and bless God with your, with your offering, with your substance. Honor God with your with your substance. We have our giving uh, details right on uh, the screen. Brother KB, we do have, right? In USA, you can always use uh, Cash App. We have our Cash App. We have also PayPal. Internationally uses PayPal. We use PayPal. And of course, Nigeria, we have there for you guys, South Africa, Botswana, and other countries that are appearing on your screens. I know Jesus himself will bless you mightily. And before we leave and while we are giving, I want to quickly pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice that their spirit is unlocked. Yes. They are receiving and they have received a baptism that, Father, uh, they have never experienced before. Yes. And this is a baptism of the Holy Spirit, the yes. baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And I declare and I decree that their lives shall never be the same again. Yes. Their spiritual eyes are open. So. And their spirits are unlocked. So. Their spiritual ears are awakened. So. And their spirit is unlocked. Is so. They shall begin to hear beyond the curtain of time. So. They shall begin to see from the supreme court of heaven. So. They shall begin to see beyond the veil of the flesh. So. In the name of Jesus. So. They shall dream dreams. So. They shall see hazon. So. They shall see visions. So. Within visions. So. In Jesus' precious name, so. I have prayed for you. So. I'm excited. I believe Tuesday we are having our class with my mentees, those that are part of our mentorship. We have people there who are texting me, so grateful to God. I'm also grateful for you. Some people can't believe they are still there. I believe, is mentorship closed now? Or we still have people that can register? It's closing when? This week? Okay. We have mentorship. So mentorship was supposed to be closed, but it's not closed. Why? Because we have people who are saying, please, man of God, this is the time we have to register. So you can still register for mentorship. It's a six months mentorship program. So far, we have had very powerful classes. I was calling, I don't know if she's here, Rebecca. I was prophesying over the life of Rebecca, one of my mentees. Rebecca, if you are here, please just say, I'm here, Apostle. She called me. It was 3 a.m. actually, her time. 3 a.m. or 5 a.m. at time, 3 a.m. between that. And she said she calculated that my time, it will be 12. <laughs> then she called me. And when she called me, I was in the prayer garden. And I told her, I said, you just called me when I entered my prayer garden. Wow. Wow. So 
she began to speak while she was calling me and I began to prophesy. I said, don't worry, I'll do the rest. It's okay, don't finish, let me prophesy. Amen. She was very grateful to the Lord. Amen. She, she, she can't stop thanking God for the mentorship. Amen. So this is a one-on-one -on -one personal mentorship with Apostle Miss. Amen. It's a six-month thing. Yes, sir. Your life shall never be the same. And continue to watch our teachings that are available for everyone, free for free, on YouTube. I'm doing the best I can for everybody. Amen. Thank you. I love you, and God bless you. Thank you for being here.